They'll not see the warning or this sign in the heavens as anything other than a rare celestial event to dazzle their kids. But the truth is, is that the total solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024 is part of a larger set of heavenly events that seem to coincide with earthly events, serious earthly events of potential biblical proportion. First of all, I want you to know that I believe that the Gog-Magog war is connected to these rare solar eclipses that we're experiencing. The reality of God using celestial events is well established. Mark 15.33 records that darkness fell over the whole land from the sixth hour until the ninth hour on the day that Christ died. And that signal in the sky was followed by a massive earthquake that cracked the temple and tore the veil into two that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. Revelation 6.12 says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. Here we see another correlation between an earthquake and a solar and lunar eclipse. The moon becoming like blood is referring to a blood-red moon, which is when the Earth's moon is in total lunar eclipse. Zechariah 14, 6-7 says it this way, It shall come to pass in that day that there will be no more light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time it shall happen that it will be light. And in Joel 2, verse 10, it says that the sun and the moon will grow dark and the stars will lose their brightness. There can be no doubt that over and over again throughout the Bible that solar and lunar eclipses are not connected to anything good. Even many of the Native Americans have deep spiritual beliefs that total solar eclipses are either very bad omens and or bring a time of transition and rebirth. Throughout the Bible, we see solar and lunar eclipses connected to events that surround major turning points on the timeline of mankind with most having to do with the end of time. For example, on Passover in 162 AD, a set of these lunar eclipses was seen and the very same year, Rome began a war with the Parthians. In 785, another set showed up on the biblical holy days of Passover and Sukkot and the Saxon war began. One of the most famous of these eclipses landed on Passover in the year 1492, just two weeks before the Catholic monarchs of Spain decided to declare war on the Jews living in Spain and drive them out of the country, better known today as the Spanish Inquisition. And after 1492, the next set of tetrad blood moon eclipses that landed on Passover and Sukkot was in 1948, when Israel became a nation. And again in 1967, during the Six-Day War, when Jerusalem became the capital of the newly rebirthing nation of Israel. Only God could orchestrate such precision. Wars and rebirthing, wars and rebirthing. Then there was the well-known blood moons of our time, 2014 and 15, which didn't seem to bring much war at all until you look a little closer and realize that after these eclipses, we've had a terror group named ISIS being formed. The global outbreak of Ebola was announced. It was when Israel went to war with Hamas in the first time in Operation Protective Edge in Gaza. And it's when America changed forever with the death of Michael Brown by a police officer in Ferguson, Missouri. His death would set the stage for all the extreme civil unrest to come in the following years that would begin the process of tearing America apart from the inside out. Now that we can see the prophetic significance of the lunar eclipses, now let's take a look at what all of you have been waiting for, the once-in-a-lifetime eclipses of 2017 and 2024 that form a proverbial X in the middle of the United States. Do they have anything to do with prophecy? Do they foretell the end of the world? We are about to answer that question. All of the buzz surrounding the solar eclipse of 2024 actually started in August of 2017. It was on August 21st, 2017, when for the first time in over 100 years, the sun crossed the entire United States of America, starting in Salem, Oregon, and moving through the entire Midwest and exiting through South Carolina on the East Coast. What was fascinating about this eclipse is that precisely at the exact time that the sun was going down in Jerusalem, the sun was rising over Salem, Oregon which is the ancient name for Jerusalem in the Bible. There are 36 cities in the United States named Salem, and the 2017 eclipse would go through exactly seven of them. We saw a lot of sevens in 2017, and you're about to see a lot more. With seven being the number of perfection in scripture, it's not surprising we have a solar eclipse going through seven Salems in 2017, and happens to be in the Hebrew year 5777. But most don't realize that eclipses are categorized for ease of recording into what they call a Saros cycle. The solar eclipse of 2017 was part of Saros 145, 
which get this, has exactly 77 different eclipses throughout the entire cycle, with the 2017 eclipse being the 22nd eclipse. 2017 was also the 50th anniversary of Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. Exactly 107 days later, for the first time in history, America, through the hand of a 71-year-old president, recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Diving a bit deeper, we see even more sevens. Hebrews chapter 7 tells us that Melchizedek is the king of Salem, with Melchizedek meaning king of righteousness, which we know is Yeshua Jesus. So all of this has to do with a perfect king of righteousness ruling over Jerusalem and the events leading up to such a crowning moment. But what's really mind-blowing is the message that forms when you go to the very place where the eclipse reaches maximum totality. The last city it goes through before it reaches totality is Jacob, Illinois, which happens to be in the only area in the United States that's called Little Egypt. The maximum totality just so happens to be a seven-mile radius that includes all of Little Egypt, including Devil's Lake, Lake Egypt, and Giant City National Park. So the last city that it goes through is Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and the next minute the epicenter of the eclipse centers over the only place in the world called Little Egypt after it's gone through seven cities with the ancient name of Jerusalem? You cannot make this up. Never before has an eclipse crossed over the entire contiguous United States of America, and then seven years later do it again in the opposite direction, forming an X across the middle. This eclipse is part of Saros 139 which has, get this, 71 total eclipses spanning almost a thousand years. It's interesting to note that the only two words that show up 71 times in the Bible are Elijah and Hebron. Elijah being the greatest prophet that ever lived, and Hebron being the burial place of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all their wives except for Rachel. Just like Elijah shows up 71 times in Scripture, so does this eclipse. And out of the 71 eclipses, the 24 eclipse just so happens to be the 30th one connecting it to the very prophetic number in Scripture and the age of Yeshua when he started his ministry. While the eclipse of 2017 would highlight seven cities named Salem and find its place of maximum totality over an area known as Little Egypt in southern Illinois, the 2024 eclipse would up the ante significantly by going through another 26 cities named Salem, meaning that the two total solar eclipses would pass over exactly 33 of the 36 cities named Salem another highly prophetic number pointing to the Messiah who was crucified at age 33. Why not all 36? I believe he personally left three outside of the darkness because there were three years that Yeshua was in Salem, Jerusalem, and it was not in darkness while he was there. So we have an eclipse representing the start of his ministry, one for the end of his ministry, and the remaining three Salems representing how many years the light of Yeshua was actually in Jerusalem. Wow! It's also incredible to learn that there are only seven cities in the entire United States with the name Nineveh, and the 2024 eclipse passes directly over two of them, while four more are barely outside the area of totality. Nineveh, of course, was the city that Jonah was sent to to warn them of their impending doom if they did not repent. There are only two cities in the whole U.S. named Jonah, and the 2024 eclipse passes right over the top of one of them in Texas. Could this be a hidden warning for the American modern name Nineveh to repent from its current trajectory or face the same judgment of God? While the 2017 eclipse hit its maximum totality in a place called Little Egypt, the actual epicenter finds itself right next to two lakes called Devil's Kitchen and Egypt Lake. And against all mathematical possibilities, the 2024 eclipse crosses the 2017 eclipse in precisely the exact place in southern Illinois, with the epicenter, the X marks a spot, being over one single road in the middle of a national forest just a few miles west of Devil's Kitchen. And what is the name of that road, you ask? None other than Salem Road. Incredible. Out of the millions of roads it could have pointed to, it pointed to Salem Road, the ancient name for Jerusalem. While all the attention has been on the two solar eclipses that intersect in the middle of the United States, there was another annular solar eclipse that also crossed the lower southwest of the United States in October of 2023, which just so happened to mark the very first week of the war in Israel against Hamas. When the 2023 eclipse is laid over the other two eclipses from 2017 and 24, something stunning shows up. While most of us wouldn't really connect that shape to anything, an ancient Israelite would have immediately recognized it as the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, 
Aleph. And although it's clear that the 2017 and 24 eclipses make an X over America, King David would have said it was the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Tav. This is more than incredible, as the ancient meaning of Aleph is strength of the leader, and the meaning of Tav, the last letter, literally means the mark or covenant. When you put the Aleph and the Tav together, it literally means the leader of the covenant or the strength of the mark. With Yeshua being called the Alpha and Omega, the Aleph and Tav, God is literally signing his son's name across the entire United States, letting us know that the leader of the covenant is coming, that he is the king of Salem, Jerusalem. He's the Aleph Tav judge, the strength of the mark that will soon be on the forehead of his saints, and he's warning America that our light will go dark if we do not turn from our wicked ways. So why do I believe it's a warning? Not only does the Bible connect eclipses to judgment and end times events, but just take a look at what happened in history when these type of solar events happen. When I did a short research of past total solar eclipses that only went through American soil, I was shocked to discover that according to almanac.com, there were only eight total solar eclipses that have happened over the United States since the founding in 1776. And incredibly, all of these are connected to war and pestilence. During the two in the 1700s, there was the Revolutionary War, in the 1800s, that was the time of the Civil War, and during the 1970s, we had the Vietnam War. There is a consistent pattern for thousands of years of total eclipses bringing war and very bad omens. One of the last times that these two eclipses formed an X over the United States was in 1806 and 1811. Three months after the second eclipse on December 16, 1811, was the largest earthquake in the history of the mainland United States, causing the Mississippi River to flow backwards and was so powerful it rang the Liberty Bell over 1,300 miles away on the East Coast. Coincidentally, six months later, the infamous War of 1812 began. Scientists say that if the same earthquake would happen today, it would send a giant earth wave 200 miles in every direction, leveling every building along its path. The X made from the solar eclipses of 17 and 24 finds itself directly over the new Madrid fault line for the first time in American history. But here's where it really gets crazy. Remember when we talked about the Hebrew letter Tav and how it's in the form of a modern day X? Well, Tav is the 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Now watch this. The 2017 eclipse was number 22 in the 77 eclipse cycle, and the total eclipse lasted two minutes and 22 seconds over Marion, Illinois in Little Egypt that year. By now, you know that the 2024 eclipse will cross the path of the 2017 eclipse, forming an X across America. But what is less known is this same exact eclipse cycle show up 18 years earlier, six plus six plus six in Turkey, where the book of Revelation says the seat of Satan is. Both forming an X in both countries, both incredibly showing up on Nissan One, which we'll talk about in a moment, and both lasting two minutes and 22 seconds, one in Little Egypt and one in Bucharest, Turkey. Ground zero for the X over Turkey was actually in a city named Amasia. This city just so happened to be the capital city of all the kings of Pontus in the third century BCE and was originally the land of the Hittites of the Bible. All the Ottoman princes, who were actually descendants of Esau, were sent there to learn how to govern during the Ottoman Empire, and according to Wikipedia, Amasia was the location of the final planning meetings for the building of a Turkish army in 1919. Did you catch that? Amasia was the city where the Turkish army was created that would one day be a part of the last great Gog and Magog war against Israel before the coming of the Messiah, not to mention that these are the descendants of Esau, the long-standing enemy brother of Jacob. Think about this for a second. The only two times in history that Saros 139 and 145 eclipses both cross and form an X is over Turkey and then over America, with one highlighting the very seat of Satan that Revelation says is in Turkey, and the other eclipse highlighting Jerusalem through 33 cities named Salem, and Jacob and Little Egypt being delivered out of the giant city in the devil's kitchen? God is sending a message through the signs in the heavens, my friends. As I mentioned before, the 2024 eclipse happens on Nisan 1, which is a very important day in biblical prophecy. It's not only the first day of God's religious calendar, in 2 Chronicles 29, 2-3, it's the day where we see the doors opened up to cleanse the temple from the defilement of former kings. Can we say today, the defilement of former presidents? 
Is it a coincidence that these solar eclipses over America pass through 33 of the 36 Salem's and the epicenter of the Mark of God just so happens to be over a place called Little Egypt right at the time of Passover? I think the handwriting's on the wall.